How's it going folks? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, we're taking a look at iOS 15.2, which is jam packed with new features. Check it out right now. How's it going ladies and gentlemen? So I've been testing out iOS 15.2 since back in October when the initial beta launched. And here it is today launching publicly it includes the new $5 tier Apple Music voice plan. It also includes the app privacy report that Apple revealed back at WWDC. We'll talk more about what all this release includes in this hands-on video. So let's get started. First and foremost, let's talk about the iPhone parts and service history. This is a new feature in 15.2 that lets you see the service history and part history of your iPhone. Now for older devices like the iPhone XS, you can see whether or not the battery has been replaced. On the iPhone 11, you can see whether or not the battery or display has been replaced. But for the iPhone 12 and 13, you can learn about whether the battery, display, or the camera have been replaced. And you can also learn whether or not the service was done using genuine Apple parts. And if not, if it was replaced with a non-genuine part, you'll see an unknown part message within settings general about. So obviously Apple prefers that you use genuine parts by trained technicians, and this will help you gain more details on that. Now let's talk about the app privacy report. So if you go to settings, privacy, and scroll all the way down, you'll see the app privacy report. Now this isn't a new feature. We've seen this before, but in 15.2, it's actually broken down in a way that it is user digestible. Previously, it was just a text file with a whole bunch of data but now this data is displayed in a way that's very user friendly. And I'll show you what I mean in a second, but app privacy report displays information for the past seven days. And there are four sections included. There's the data and sensor access. So you'll learn whenever an app has requested access to your camera, for instance, there's also app network activity to show the domains that an app has contacted and the date and time that the domains were contacted. And there's also website network activity, which shows how many domains have been contacted by the websites you visit through a web browser within an app. And finally, there's the most contacted domains, which shows the domains contacted by all apps you use and by websites you visit within those apps. So app privacy report, like I said, lots of data here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now, initially you won't see anything until you start to use apps. And then this thing will fill up really quickly as it reports sensor access and website activity. So you can see already, I just use a few apps and you can see the data and sensor access, the podcast app already requested access to contacts and media. And you can see the exact time when those requests were made. So that's just for the podcast app. You have the app store, which requested access to contacts as well. Then you have the app network activity below that for for the individual apps so will show the domains that those apps were contacting. So for podcasts, you can see the various domains in there. Obviously it's going to be a lot because podcast apps by their very nature are going to contact various domains, not just including the podcast itself, like the actual audio data, but for instance, show notes and things of that nature. And there's also domains contacted by other content as well. Uh, so that's all broken down for you within the app privacy report. Here you can see I've used some additional apps like the maps app. So I have contacts and location. So it requests location access here on Filmic Pro. You see camera and microphone. Uh, so really this gives you a, a good way to monitor the way that apps are behaving on your iPhone. What are they requesting access to? When are they requesting that access, etc. So just a very good high level overview of all the activity for the various apps on your phone. Now let's talk about legacy contact. And this is the part of the video where it takes a slight morbid turn, but that's okay because this is actually very important. So if you go to settings, iCloud, you go to password and security below, you'll see legacy contact. Now this is someone that you trust to have access to your data access to your digital footprint, access to download your data from your account after your death. Now I know, like I said, it sounds a little morbid, but basically what you wanna do is add someone you trust. Choose someone you trust to have access to your data from your account after your death, and then that contact will need to provide an access key that you give them and a copy of your death certificate to access data from your account. And then this allows you to pass down your digital legacy. So I'm going to add a legacy contact right now. And right off the bat, it's going to prompt you to add a contact from your list of family share contacts. And that's 
more than likely a contact that you would want to use. You can also choose someone else from your entire list of contacts, but I'm going to add someone from my family share contacts. So as you can see, your digital legacy contact Ducky will be able to access the data stored in your account after your death. This includes messages, photos, files, contacts, calendar events, apps you've downloaded. It won't include iCloud, Keychain, or licensed media. So all your movie collection, the SpongeBob or whatever is not included. Okay, so keep that in mind. The next thing you want to do is to share your access key. Now, there are a couple of ways to do that. You can send a message, which is obviously the easiest way. You can also print off a copy of your access key. That's actually a good idea to add it to your estate planning documents. Here's what that copy looks like. Let's go ahead and pinch out on it so we can see it up close and personal. I'm obviously blurring out the QR code and the actual access key um, because you want to definitely keep that secret and only give that to, to a legacy contact or only have it in your estate planning documents. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select send a message. And as you can see, it creates a canned message and it says something to the effect of Ducky. Hey, I've added you as my legacy contact, blah, blah, blah. You can edit that message if you want to. I'm not going to do that. So let's just tap the send button to go ahead and send that over now. Now, this doesn't mean that the legacy contact can go out right now and request access to your account. No. For security, number one, Apple's going to need your death certificate, but they're also going to want to verify your birthday. So make sure that is updated on your account as well. So I can see my legacy contacts now. And for legacy contacts that add me, I'll see those below in this list as well. So you'll have both in there. So here's a legacy contact for someone who added me. I can view their access key just like that. Print that out if I need to, et cetera. So let's talk about something a little less morbid now. Let's talk about hide my email updates. One of the best new features in iOS 15 is hide my email, which creates a random address that forwards to your inbox. Now, previously, you couldn't actually create a hide my email address within the mail app. You could do so in Safari. You could do so within the settings, hide my email, but now you could do so directly in the mail app. So I chose hide my email in the front field. Notice it doesn't actually assign an email address until you select the recipient because the email address created here, which is random, is bound to this single recipient. And I can prove that because if I add another address, yes, you're gonna get a message saying only one recipient allowed because that hide my email random address is linked to the recipient individually. So every time you use hide my email and send it to a new person, you're going to get a brand new randomly generated email address that's bound to that recipient from then on out. So you can see there is that random email address. Now, if I go into iCloud preferences, go into hide my email, you're going to see that random email linked to jeff at nine to five mac.com. And every time I send an email using hide my email to jeff at nine to five mac, this is the random email address that will be used. Now I can deactivate that email address and create a new random address if I want to, but I have to deactivate first. Now, this is probably one of my favorite new iOS 15.2 features, the ability to search for a song within a playlist, something you couldn't do up until now inexplicably. I don't know why, but now here's a playlist. There's a lot of songs there. Of course, I can scroll through and try to find the song I want to, but now you have a search window at the top and you could just search for the song you're looking for within that playlist. Just type Panda. There's Dream Panda after the rain. I don't know anything about this song. I just thought it sounded cool. It has cool album artwork as well. Now on the topic of Apple Music, there is that new Apple Music voice plan that launches today. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test this out on my iPhone because it still doesn't seem like it's completely like propagated. However, this new $5 a month plan will allow you to use Apple Music using only your voice using Hey You Know Who, Siri of course, to do everything. So there is no like library or anything like that. You actually have to request every song or playlist or whatever else you want to play with Apple Music. It is all done using your voice on any compatible device that includes your HomePod, your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, your Apple TV, etc. It's all done via Siri and it's all done on demand. So you can't save a song to your library for instance and there's no like UI to navigate. This is all done via your voice. And there's actually uh, Zane Lowe from Apple Music will go through it and actually walk you through how to use Siri with Apple Music, but you can ask Siri for albums or artists or particular soundtracks. You can ask Siri to play uh, top hits if you want to. You can ask it to play throwbacks. Of course, you can play Apple Music Radio. And there's other Siri commands that will work with Apple Music Voice. But again, $5 a month, 
Siri only. Now, a couple of days ago, I had to pull out the generator. I had to pull out the fuel because we had, a, you probably heard a lot of tornadoes and severe weather here in Kentucky. Uh, so I was using my generator. I took this picture to send to a friend showing him the type of fuel I was using. But if you tap the info pane, you now have the ability to see whether night mode was used for this particular image. You even see how much time was taken just like that. Now iOS 15.2 includes some subtle emergency SOS updates, including some updates to the headings, for instance, call withhold. And honestly, nothing has really changed with emergency SOS outside of the fact that you now get eight seconds when invoking emergency SOS. So I'm gonna do so now by holding the side button and the volume button. And as you can see, it's counting down from eight instead of five. And wow, that gives me anxiety. <laughs> Always afraid I'm gonna actually make that thing go off. I'm gonna press the side buttons uh, five times. You get the countdown from eight <coughs> instead of five, which gives you a little bit more time. Now for iPhone 13 Pro owners, they will definitely appreciate this new updated feature in 15.2. So obviously you get the macro mode on the iPhone 13 Pro, which basically automatically switches over to the ultra wide camera to allow you to get super close to your subject and get all that detail, pick all that detail up automatically. Now. In iOS 15.2, if you go to settings and you go to camera, you're gonna notice a new switch at the bottom, macro control. This will show camera control for automatically switching to the ultra wide lens to capture macro photos and videos. So the camera will automatically switch over still, right? Whenever you get close to a subject, the wide angle, or I'm sorry, the ultra wide camera will automatically invoke still. So it doesn't disable the automatic macro function, but you see in the bottom left hand corner, See that? So now you can disable the macro mode whenever it switches over to it. And there, now you're using just the wide angle camera. See how it does that? Nice feature. Now in 15.2, there's a new feature in cellular settings that builds on the intelligent tracking prevention. This allows you to limit IP address tracking by hiding your IP address from known trackers in the mail app and Safari. And when this is disabled, iCloud private relay will also be disabled. There's some iPad OS multitasking updates. So now if you tap the multitasking button at the top, you now have some UI that shows that split view can actually work in either direction, not just on the left-hand side, although it will still go over to the left-hand side. But now when I tap the multitasking button and I tap this button here, now I have the ability to switch between left and right either way, just like this. So I can tap right to go over to the right. And if I'm left, obviously you can't go left, but remember you can always simply drag just like that. Now there are some iPad OS TV app updates. Now, instead of the bottom bar, you get a handy sidebar. Finally, the TV app is much more useful this way. And additionally, you get integrated store functionality so you can go directly to the store for movies and TV shows within the TV app. And now you can not only swipe from the bottom right hand corner in iPad OS 15.2, but thanks to an updated preferences panel for gestures, there's now a left corner swipe to join the right corner swipe. So you can assign either one of those to screenshot or quick note, I have right for quick note, left for screenshot, and that is cool. And you get an updated notification summary with a more rounded radius and a new bubble type view for your notifications. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about iOS 15.2? Do you agree that it was jam packed with new features and changes? Which one is your favorite? If you appreciate this video, leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos because trust me, we got a lot more coming down the pipeline. This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.